Hi, I'm Rose Spears, Communications Director for Deadwood History, Inc. And I'm here today with Carolyn Weber, Executive Director for Deadwood History. And Carolyn's gonna tell us about William Emery Adams, fondly known as W.E. to all of us here in Deadwood. He was a prominent, influential man that came to Deadwood. And Carolyn, how did he come to Deadwood? He got to Deadwood by stagecoach. He left from Minnesota with his brother James in 1877. He was just 23 years old at the time. And he came here originally to pan for gold like everybody else that came here at that time. And uh, his brother uh, purchased the Paradise Restaurant here in Deadwood and uh, set to business there. And shortly after that, he decided he didn't want the restaurant anymore. W.E. decided he did not want to pan for gold anymore because he wasn't having very much luck at it. So they went into business and opened up the Banner Grocery Store on Lower Main Street in Deadwood. And that was all in 1877. Right. So the year he comes, he does all this great stuff. He goes and explores for gold like everybody else, mm -hmm. but then he decides that the best thing to do is really mind of the miners, right? Exactly. Right. Exactly. That's what he, both he and his brother did. And they did that until, well, uh, well, they did it for many years, but then in 1879, of course, you know what happened their building burned to the ground in the fire that happened, which destroyed so many businesses and other businesses in town as well. But then by 1880, they had rebuilt and they'd opened up a store, the Banner Grocery Store at 629 Main Street, which is the current location of the Celebrity Hotel there. And so they were very successful there. And then eventually they ended up moving or did, did James decide to leave Deadwood? He did for whatever reason, I don't know. In 1889, James decided he was gonna go to California and try things out there for himself. And W.E. thought, okay, well, I'll buy you out. So he did. And then he decided, W.E., was that he was going to expand his business. He was going to get out of the retail end of grocery and go into the wholesale end of it. So he needed a larger spot because the, the 629 Main Street just wasn't large enough for him. It was only a two-story building. So then he went to... Um, Oh, Rose, where did he go? He went over to Sherman Street, and that was in 1894 that he went over there and built a two-story building over there. It was a much larger building, but still only two stories. And then over 15 years, he had expanded that to include the entire block there and a four-story building, and it became known as the Adams Block. So that, and talk about location, location, location. It was right next to the railroad tracks. So if you're a wholesale business person, ideal. Absolutely. And that, that location, Carolyn, still stands today. Oh, absolutely. It's the site of Deadwood Dicks today. Yep. Right and across from the Adams Museum. Right. And so he got into the wholesale grocery. Um, he went to California. He had homes there with mm -hmm. his first wife. Isn't that correct? Yes, he did. And so he had, he had citrus groves. Yes, in Pasadena. Mm -hmm. He did. And then he had a home there, and he also had a home in Palm Springs. So he had a way to ship a lot of different foods and stuff. So this was like a win-win for that yeah. time frame. Yes, he um, was very progressive in what he was doing and had a lot of foresight into how can he make the most out of his business um, at the least expense, you know, because if you own your own citrus grove and you're shipping everything in on a railroad that's right next to your store, well, you're pretty lucky. Right, absolutely. Well, Adams was wealthy, Carolyn, but he also had a lot of loss in his life as well. A lot of tragedy. He did. It's unfortunate. Um, he got married uh, to his first wife, Alice, in 1880, and they had two children, Lucille and Helen. And then in 1909, Lucille got married, and she moved to Detroit with her new husband. And unfortunately, in 1912, she passed away. She got a contracted typhoid fever and passed away from that. So that was very sad for their family. And then uh, their youngest daughter, Helen, she got married and moved to California. And uh, unfortunately, they lost her in 1925. They lost her brand new baby daughter at the time. And then his first wife, Alice, passed away as well. So in 48 hours, W.E. lost his family. Well, he had to have been just devastated. Oh, absolutely heartbroken. And this happened in California. So he had to come back to Deadwood to their beautiful home at 22 Van Buren Street, the Adams house there, and he was just heartbroken. He didn't think he would ever find love again and that this was just the end of things for him. 
And then when he was going through all that, Carolyn, Lucille was actually buried at Mount Moriah Cemetery at that time. She correct? was, yes. And then what what did they do? They created a family mausoleum? In California, they did, because that is where, um, well, they did have ties there. Like we said, they had the Citrus Grove, they had two homes there, and um, Luce, Helen had lived there for years, and so they just established their um, burial plot there. And then uh, Lucille, she her body was exhumed and moved over to uh, California to the uh, to the cemetery there. So how yeah. did W. E. end up moving on from that great tragedy in his life, Carolyn? Well, Rose, it's kind of like a lifetime made for movie, a lifetime movie thing, because he, by a very chance encounter, he met a beautiful young woman on the train on his way back to Deadwood from California one time. And then they met in 1926 and in 1927, they got married and they lived very happily together here in Deadwood um, and past in California too. They continued to go back and forth um, until 1934. So Carolyn, there was a lot of gossip about the relationship between Mary and W.E. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I'll tell you a little bit, a few tidbits. Yes, I can. There are a few things that happened. So uh, when they got married, uh, W.E. was 73 years old and Mary was, how old do you think she was? 29. 29. Oh my I know. God. I know. Oh. That was enough to set people. 44 years. To talking about. 44 year difference. Yes, that's wow. huge actually. And the, but another thing that was um, a controversial thing was that uh, W.E. was a Episcopalian. He was very faithful to his church, and then uh, Mary was a devout Roman Catholic. So quite a religious difference there. And one of the big gossip stories was that she was from a working class family from Leed. And of course, W.E. was a wealthy businessman from Deadwood. And at that time, Leed and Deadwood had quite the rivalry going on. And in fact, in one of the early letters that he had sent to Mary while he was um, trying to woo her into marriage, he said, well, perhaps if we got married, this would uh, cause people to bury the hatchet between Leed and Deadwood, our union would. And it did. That's great. That's great. We have a, a great sister city in Leed, so we're, we're very, very proud of that. You bet. Yep. So, Carolyn, tell us a little bit about W.E. Adams' contribution to Deadwood, both politically and business-wise. Well, he was a uh, outstanding civic leader in Deadwood. He was a six-term mayor in Deadwood, so, you know, he had to have been quite popular in the community to be elected six times as a mayor and he did a lot of good for the city. Um, in 1924, when he was mayor, he was instrumental in getting the Days of 76 celebration up and running because 1924 was their first year. Um, he got a lot of street work done here in Deadwood, I understand, and he was also uh, instrumental in, well, he built the Adams Museum in Deadwood, and he built that in 1929 and opened it to the public in 1930. Can you imagine, Rose, he was doing that in 1929 when it was at the height of the depression and the stock market had just crashed, but he still had all this money and he was so philanthropic and he believed so much in preserving and making accessible Deadwood's history to the public that he built this building and then he turned it over to the city of Deadwood. He gifted it to them. So how great is that? Well, it must have made the citizens just very proud that, that he had so much importance at, at such a difficult economic time for the country that this yes. man was willing to spend his money. He was, and he really believed in it. And he had people, he met with people, oh, consistently from 1924 when the celebration began up until he did open the museum. They said, we have so many artifacts and so many stories of Deadwood's history that we need to protect it and we need to have a place where people can go and enjoy it. And so that's why he created it. And Carolyn, he was um, kind of prompted to do that from the Deadwood Businessmen's Club yep, the Deadwood and Business. then his second wife, Mary. His second wife, Mary. How great is that? Mary says to him, yes, you should definitely do this. You should go ahead and build a museum and you know you should dedicate it to Lucille and Helen and Alice. And so he did. And Carolyn, W.E.'s Adam's name is all over Deadwood mm -hmm. on buildings. Can you yes. share a little bit of, about that, about why his name appears? 
Well, he, uh, I mean, think about it. He was a very successful businessman. He's taken over an entire block on Sherman Street. And he just has his name plastered all over that. And then right across the street from where he had his business, his wholesale grocery business, the Adams Museum. So he creates that, and of course, that has his name on it. Originally, it was called the Adams Memorial Hall in honor of his family, and then over the years, it got changed to the Adams Museum. And then, 22 Van Buren Street, we know it is the beautiful Queen Anne-style Victorian home that he bought from uh, Nathan Franklin in 1920, and they lived there at that time. He and his second wife, Mary, did so, until he passed away in 1930. So we refer to that as the historic Adams House, and right. that is open seasonally from April through October. Um, it's a, a fabulous tour, so we invite you to come and see that beautiful, beautiful property yes. as well. Um, and then the Homestake Adams Research and Cultural Center, where we're sitting right, today, where you, Carolyn. Where we're at. That's right, our home territory, right here at the Homestake Adams Research and Cultural Center. And when we received the collection of archival materials from the Homestake Mine, we wanted to honor both the Homestake because of their large collection and the contribution that they've made to the history of Deadwood and the Black Hills. And also we wanted to honor our original benefactor, W.E. Adams. So that's how we came up with the name and that's why it's called what it is today. Well, we also, there's with life, there is also death, unfortunately. So Carolyn, um, what happened to W.E. in his last few years? Well, in 1934, he was attending a bank board of directors meeting on Main Street in Deadwood, and he suffered a stroke. And so then they brought him back to the Adams House on Van Buren Street, um, where he lay in the bedroom uh, trying to recover and hopefully would recover, but after nine days, he did not. And so he passed away in the Adams House in 1934. Well, and that's a, it's a sad thing, but he lived to be 80 years old, is that yes, correct, Carolyn? Exactly. So he lived a very long life here yeah. in Deadwood. Um, we're so grateful to him. It's people like W.E. Adams, Carolyn, and I'm sure you agree, that um, did so much for Deadwood. He, among just a ton of other great people that yes. we'll, we'll feature eventually. Yeah. And talk about, but um, Deadwood is Wild Bill and Calamity Jane, and thank you for all of those great people that came to Deadwood, because yes. that's extremely important to us. Yes. But these other people, Adams being one of the most influential, definitely he matters did. so much yes. to all of us. And he really helped this town um, become settled and become progressive and continue to grow and expand. And it was because of people such as he and Harris Franklin as well that really built this town up and Miller and so many other people too. So we like to pay tribute to the lesser known heroes of Deadwood as well. 